This is chasing arrows. You know that famous recycling logo we've all come to know and love? This gets in our life every day. The products we buy, how we use them, what we do at the end. And if you're like me, recycling's a pretty cool concept. New stuff becomes old because we use it, and old stuff, it becomes new if we recycle properly. But today, chasing arrows is broken. Mark and I are here to tell you why that is and what we can actually all do about it. So our gateway to recycling is the blue bin, the stuff that comes into our lives. If it can be reused, we put it in the blue bin, and the deal is somebody's going to take that away, and they're going to recycle it, right? Well, I want to share two observations. One, there's material I put in the blue bin that I, I don't really care about, like a milk jug. But sometimes my kids get use a toy too much, it gets old, it can't be donated, but it, it's plastic. When I put it in the blue bin, I feel like maybe there's a missed opportunity there. The second observation I've had is we put different material in the blue bin. Well, that material isn't recycled equally. Metal, for example, is recycled very well. Plastic, on the other hand, is not. Plastic is something I really care about. When I put it in the blue bin, I don't want it in the ocean. I don't want it on a beach or in my park or coming back to me as microplastic in the food that I eat. Unfortunately, of all the plastic we consume, only 9% of it is recycled. You can gasp, you've been sorting your trash, 9% is recycled. The plastic recycling system is broken. One of the major reasons is because it's often cheaper to make new products out of new plastic than use the recycled stuff. Another problem is when we throw our plastic in the blue bin and then it gets mixed with our neighbors and then mixed in a truck and then it shows up for processing, it's dirty, it's contaminated, it's hard. Labor costs are high. And then participation is stagnated because we have this suspicion about the blue bin that maybe it's not working. During COVID alone, more than 100 recycling facilities closed in the United States. When those facilities close, they fail us, and they basically terminate our ability to recycle plastic. So we're getting scenes like this more and more. So what do we do about it? Really big problems, I think we can shrink them down. I think we can find a way where we can connect to the solution. And I think if we had concrete, actionable steps, maybe we could do something about it. So to make this concrete, <clears throat> we put together this crack team of plastic anarchists. These are smart scientists, engineers, designers, entrepreneurs. We have one goal. We want to make the plastic system better for us to use in recycling. And <clears throat> we are going to drag together this recycling system into the 21st century. And as designers, we think in design principles. We came up with three that we think really, really, really matter for this uh, problem. The first is, how do we actually use the experience you already have? We've all been recycling. It's been about 50 years now since Earth Day. And we have a lot of practice. We want to channel that motivation and give it a new outlet so we don't have to start from scratch. Second, it's a little bit of magic. You know, if you're like me, you wonder, hey, if I recycle this thing, what does it grow up to be? What kind of product will it be next? Will it become a product? And we actually want to show you that not only can you take your waste and turn it into a product, we can make something in front of your own eyes that you actually want. Do you play dominoes? Let's make some dominoes. You want to give a gift? Let's make a picture frame. Also, we were thinking, could we build a system where we could track the products we make as we take plastic off grid, certify it, and actually make sure that we could reuse that product at the end of its life? And if we were to do all this, how valuable could it be? Well, our goal is to make this a thousand times more valuable than recycling in the blue bin system, and that's what we're going to do. So. Why does this matter? Well, for the last decade, I spent time researching people's habits. How do we recycle? How do we try new products that help us avoid plastic? 
why don't we recycle? You know what? It's just really, really hard. For instance, every day I drink coffee and sometimes I buy beer and I take it home. Both generate plastic waste. I put that in the blue bin today, but I know, hey, it's not really gonna work. I just do it to make a point. With the Chasing Arrows project, which is what we call our project, I can now take that same waste and do something with it that makes it more meaningful. In this exact example, I use this waste to create some keychains that Mark and I developed in my garage. We created a mold and we actually made them. And those keychains have value to me. So now when I shop, I don't just think about what do I actually want this product for at this moment. I kind of come up with like an end of life plan with what I'm gonna do with the waste. And I'm starting to see the world in a whole new way where I can actually do something with it. And Mark's gonna walk you through how we do that. So first, we scaled down the recycling system. So now you can see from input to product, the whole process. The first step, it's the same thing you do today, collect the plastic you wanna recycle. Next, that plastic needs to be converted into a usable material that can support production. Then, it's melted and injected into a mold, and that mold transforms it into a product, basically anything you can think of. And when you open the mold, this is what you see. It's a keychain that you made out of your waste. You recycled, maybe for the first time. Remember that missed opportunity with my child's toy at the blue bin? What if I could have used it in this system and that keychain was a memento of that child's toy that I could keep with me? has a little bit more meaning. It's one of a kind. It's one of a kind and ready to be certified in a new closed loop. And we actually want to take it a step further. We don't want to just certify your material. We want to embed a digital ID that allows you to connect a specific product that you made with the backstory of how that product came to be, what it means to you, call it the provenance of your plastic. And by connecting more and more opportunities where you take waste, you don't choose the blue bin, but you actually choose a product. We want to help you track your effort over time. And ideally, you would do that with a lot of other people like you. And we kind of create this community of conditions where a lot of people can come up with innovation strategies to figure out the recycling problem. And if we could build a community like this, we think we could actually offer four brand new benefits that fulfill the promise of recycling that haven't happened yet. The first one is, let's get you in touch with what you already use. Where do you use plastic? How much? How often? What type is it? What can we do with it? When you have to contribute that plastic to our system, you start to think about these things more. Second, let's help you replace a purchasing decision with something you can make now. You got an interesting idea for a product? You know what, let us know and we will help you build a mold to take your waste and make that product for you. Somebody else have a product that they made that you really like? You know what, we'll ship you the mold and you could try something new. More of your waste times more products equals more opportunities to recycle properly. And every one of these products can have a digital ID with it so that you can create a sort of ecosystem of experiences that stick with you long after that product use is done and if we do this enough and enough, we think that we can almost create a new type of influencer, which is a plastic influencer. Somebody who's really crazy and goes out into the forest to find plastic and bring it back, or has just killer product ideas, or both. Can you show people how you're doing it and does that have an effect? And I hope what you'll take away from this is, by centering recycling on individuals and not society, we've created a new possibly virtuous loop recycling system that can scale up differently. And as more and more people actually do this together, we unlock more and more unique innovations and strategies that can just reinforce the whole thing. And that's what we're calling the Chasing Arrows Project. We hope you'll come join us on our quest to reimagine recycling, and thank you. <laughs>